Hello HP Touchpad users, today I want to tell you about another fantastic signage of Mod 10.1 ROM. Come check it out here in the XDA Developers Forum. Today we're going to be talking about Shumash's Schizoid ROM. Come give Shumash a big thumbs up and thanks for this fantastic ROM. You're probably wondering, what is a Schizoid ROM? Well, a Schizoid ROM is a ROM that's had a schism in its personality. It now believes it's three ROMs in one. It's crazy good. Absolutely fantastic for the end user. It's a little bit paranoid Android, a little bit Android Open Kang project, and a lot of CyanogenMod Mod 10.1 wrapped up into one crazy schizoid package. Absolutely fantastic. Just overflowing with features, options, and customization. You really have to check it out for yourself. We're going to go over a bunch of it today, but there's going to be more for you to see and adventure through yourself. So let's talk about what works and what doesn't work. In this build, the camera works and the camera works with a low battery drain during sleep which is absolutely fantastic now there's a low power suspend fix which went into this previously with the camera working we we're getting like 60 to 90 ma battery drain during sleep and now we're getting like minus three to four so absolutely fantastic fix there uh, sd card mounting works fine the wi-fi works fine we get various android open kang project and paranoid android tweaks uh, the sound works perfectly fine all you audio files out there will be happy to hear that the sound works fine with the screen off as well so you can listen to all your music and everything is great now what doesn't work uh, the usual stuff no bluetooth and 10.1 roms at the moment uh, rotation sometimes hangs not really a big deal and uh, settings the sound force closes sometimes uh, if you go into the the tab on the left sometimes it'll just force close you just have to, have to go back in not a big deal but it'll be fixed in the next build let's hope great to see and you can check out his change log down here which basically just goes over what we just talked about with the changes and the lower battery drain so great to see uh, another notable point is there is an overclocked kernel in this build let's take a look at some of these absolutely fantastic features and check them out oh and as of always i have my very own signage mod 10.1 thread over at roots wiki where i summarize all the different builds so if you want the latest on what's happening with signage mod 10.1 you'll come check it out here and i've got a great summary of all the builds a common question i'm often asked is what is the difference between all these different builds well i've tried to put down a nice little summary for you so you can just kind of browse and then peruse the roms and try them out at your leisure great to see huh Anyways, check it out. The links will be in the description below. Let's go over some of the great features of our schizoid. All right, let's take you on the tour of some of these great features. Uh, first off, I'll just show you the camera does work, just so you can see the proof for yourself. Got to switch on a light, it's dark. Big thanks to Shumash for this fantastic build. Take your pictures, have fun, Skype. It's all working. Great news. When you open up your notifications over here on the right, go to the settings here you'll notice everything's a little bit different with the layout you have on the fly DPI settings I'm using the go launcher EX in conjunction with that and Pi settings if you're not familiar with Pi settings it removes this navigation bar from the bottom here and there'll be on-screen controls like swipe controls that are invisible uh, instead now you may need to move around the icons I've adjusted mine here for the Pi controls so you'll swipe it up and hold and here's all those hidden navigation buttons pretty cool they pop up on the screen let go and they disappear and you get the additional options over here if you swipe from the right side of the screen you'll get the opposite side of the menu so here's the notifications where they would be so pretty cool if you want to get rid of it swipe it back up and select pi again now that's a fun little feature great to play around with let's go into the settings and try some other stuff out one of the first little settings you're going to notice is pack in black a little ACDC reference here it's a toggle switching on and off to make the background a nice black on white contrast and it'll persist when you navigate around it's pretty cool and fun to play around with just toggle it off and on like so now let's look at our hybrid properties these are paranoid Android settings. We can change our default colors and our UI, our user interface. Uh, by default, I'm using a tablet, of course, so let's try switching it to a phone and see what happens. You get a summary of some of the changes here, and we're going to apply it, and we'll go check out the differences on our home screen. You notice our navigation disappeared there for a moment. And it's back. You notice there's two settings buttons, one on either side navigation is a little larger 
pull down menu from the upper right for our settings and the left for the notification, a little more phone integrated. And we can go around just kind of changing these back and forth. Try a large tablet, just make the buttons a little bit bigger. And this is where the DPI changing can come in handy. As you see, some of the titles have disappeared, so I can switch that around to bring those back up. Or I can just switch it back to another UI. It's easy to do and fun to play around with. And back to my stock settings. It just takes a moment to adjust. Lots of fun. Let's go back to the settings. Just below the hybrid properties, we can find the ROM control. Here we can find the contribution of the Android Open Kang project. Check them out here. And there's a lot of different menus to check out in here and go through. You can custom change your boot animation, for instance, something I love to do. I've got my own custom boot animations. We've got lock screen options, navigation bar options, navigation ring options, ribbons, battery, clock, signal, LED sound, and vibration. So there's a lot of settings to check out in here. Come have a look. Can't go through them all. It would just take forever but absolutely excellent variety of settings. Now we're going to take a look at the performance control. What's notable here is that Shumash has included a custom kernel. Now a custom kernel will allow you to overclock the device further than what would normally be allowed. The touchpad maxes out at 1.7 gigahertz normally, but this custom kernel will allow us to push it over 2.1 gigahertz. So that's pretty high, big caution there. Don't leave it like that for prolonged periods of time. Big danger, you could destroy your device. So be careful when overclocking. That being said, I'm gonna show you it is possible. Great to see these sorts of options in these newer builds. Now I'd say about 1.5 is the optimal for the HP touchpad, doesn't really need to go past there. And in addition, we have new governor settings. You'll find lag free and badass. Great to see. Check it out. Another quick note for Pi users. If you go to system and Pi settings, you'll find additional settings for those Pi controls. Great to see. The more customization, the better in my opinion. Please subscribe to see the latest in the HP touchpad and Sanjin Mod 10.1 builds and like the video. Thanks for watching everyone.